Hello, welcome. I'm in the middle of building three robots, one from foam board, one that I'm CNC milling, and one from shape lock plastic. And this video is going to cover the Crave Monster, which is the foam board robot. I started building this a while back, just doing some sketches on a whiteboard to get my dimensions. None of this was uh, done in CAD. And then I built this foam chassis, which is made from Dolly Tree Ready Board. It's the lowest density foam board that I can find. The chassis also has angled sides this year, which uh, means that if it gets tipped up on its side, it should be able to fall back right onto its wheels again. Um, the robot's not invertible, so I need to do everything I can to make sure it doesn't uh, end up upside down. The wheels are about the same from last year, except I'm using four instead of two. Two didn't work very well last year. I'll link a tutorial video for last year's robot if you want to learn more about the drive system. That goes into a lot more detail than this video will. Um, but yeah, the wheels are still 3D printed. They'll still easily shatter if they get hit. Hopefully I can drive well enough for that not to happen. The motors are now 300 RPM instead of 100 RPM. Um, so I get a lot more uh, speed than I have in the past. Um, but other than that, it's about the same. I'm still using the uh, dual channel speed controller from Endgame Robotics, which worked well last year. When I wire up the speed controller, I just press the one button on it to set the zero point and then I'm good to go. I finish up wiring and I take it for a test drive. Uh, again, the, the speed is a lot, lot better than it was in past years, and because it's four-wheel drive, I should still have enough torque to carry other robots around the arena. Next, I add skewers to make sure that the robot doesn't tip forward. The first year I built a Crave Monster, it had a lifting wedge in the front of the robot, and that uh, broke off pretty quickly. I'm going to be trying a lifter again though this year, so I gotta make sure I've got something to keep it from tipping forward. Now I move on to the bottom panel, I cut that out. One thing that I've been doing different about this chassis versus last uh, couple years is I'm making sure that as many joints as possible are not glued but a single piece of foam that I just bend. This should make it uh, a little bit more durable, make it less likely to come apart at the seams. This first attempt at the bottom plate has the dustpan integrated as one piece, uh, but the angle that it made with the ground I wasn't really happy with. This robot really lives or dies based on this wedge angle, and this was a little bit too steep. So I just uh, cut it off and started again. And then do dustpan angle is a lot shallower and should work a little better. Then I cut a metal uh, wedge, this is just aluminum. Um, I can't remember what thickness it is, honestly, but it's very, very thin. Uh, but I cut that uh, two-inch strip of aluminum and uh, sand it down. I spent more time sanding this wedge down than I did building the entire foam chassis. And after I glue it on with a little bit of epoxy, um, you can see here just how sharp it is. Next, I attached the other three walls of the dustpan, the back uh, double-thick wall as well as the two side walls that make up the underbite. Uh, the two sidewalls have a little bit more 3D shape to them than they have in the past. Um, I wanted to get away from the purely box look that the previous one had. And I thought a large head, small body look would kind of be cartoony and funny. The dustpan itself is a lot less deep than it has been in the past, and that'll be fine, I think, because the lifter should be able to uh, lift opponents, and I won't need all that depth of the dustpan in order to get the opponent's wheels off the ground. And speaking of the lifter, here are the two servos that will uh, that'll do the lifting. In order to get enough travel, I extended the servo horns with these little 3D printed pieces here. And after securing the servos with some more bamboo skewers, um, I have 3D printed linkages to run between the servos and the dustpan. And here's a close-up of the little link that attaches the dustpan that lets the servo pull the dustpan upwards. It's small, but I haven't had any warping of the foam board where that little link attaches. I attached the upper jaw to the same servo that I used from last year's Crave, and for the hinges on the left side, I'm using these foam hinges that are the same style as used in RC airplanes. And last, but certainly not least, I wanted it to have a tail, and I had no size left over, so I came up with this start procedure. This lets the Crave have a fluffy tail, while still meeting the maximum 12 by 12 starting size constraint.
And with it all wired up and ready for testing, it weighs 0.9 pounds, so right under the weight limit. Um, I have a little bit of extra weight to spare, which I know I'll need because this ends up being hot glued together during competitions, and that does add weight to the robot uh, throughout the whole competition, so I got a plan for that. And finally, here's a little test showing that it can in fact lift over one pound. So thank you very much for watching. More videos will be coming up because I'll be competing in the Illinois Bot Brawl with these three robots. So stay tuned.